Hello, welcome to IPR Academy. This session is on open source basics. This is the second session in a series of sessions on open source software related licenses. Let's start this session with the help of a simple example. A group of engineers at IIT Madras develop a software called as MyTV. The software plays TV on mobile phones. They make this software available as an open source software. Now, what do you think you can do with this software and what is it that you cannot do? This of course requires an understanding of the license that governs the software. You will not be able to conclude on what you can do and what you cannot do without knowing the license that governs the software. So the first step towards understanding what you can do and what you cannot do is understanding the terms and conditions of the license. Now open source software licenses are broadly of three types. The first type of license is a viral license or viral group of licenses. Then the second group of licenses are restrictive group of licenses and the third uh, set of licenses are flexible licenses. Now each one of these licenses gives you a certain amount of rights and certain extent of flexibility with respect to using a software governed by these licenses. Now let's have a look at an example of each one of these kinds of licenses and understand what they grant what rest and what kind of restrictions they impose. Now, the most popular example of a viral license is the general public license. General public license is a license created by the Free Software Foundation. It has three versions, version 1, version 2 and version 3 and is uh, generally considered by corporates to be one of the most uh, stringent open source software licenses. This license uh, or this a software governed with by this license would become a viral software and this license is referred to as viral license because whenever a software touches a software governed by this license, then so that software also in most probability will be governed by GPL. Now let's have a look at the terms and conditions of this license. Now what are the rights that this license grants? This license grant, uh, grants the right to copy, right to modify and right to distribute the software governed by the license. I if MyTV is governed by GPL, then you can copy my TV, you can modify it to suit your requirements and you can also distribute it. However, while distributing, you have to follow certain conditions. If you are distributing the software my TV as it is, this license states that the source code of the software must be made available during distribution. The software must be governed only by GPL, it cannot be governed by a different license. And thirdly, the notices on the software must be retained or they must be kept intact. You cannot tamper with the notices on the software. Now, what if you modify my TV and then you want to distribute it? In such a case, the modified version's source code also must be made available during distribution. The modified version will continue to be governed by GPL. You cannot transfer it under a different license of your own then the notices have to be kept intact, original notices. Then you have to incorporate a notice stating that you are the one who has modified the software and the purpose of modification. Now, this software, this license states that any software governed by it comes without any warranty or liability, which means if you use a software governed by this license, you cannot make the author or copyright owner of the software liable for any damage caused to you because of it. Now, one of the most important and highly debated aspects of this license is with respect to what amounts to be a derivative work. Now, as for the license, if a derivative work is created from a software governed by this license, then that uh, derivative work will also be governed by GPL and its source code has to be made available. Why is this very significant? Because what happens is many times when you take open source software, you combine that open source software with your own proprietary software and you do not want your proprietary software to be governed by that open source license. And that is why 
this the aspect of derivative work is uh, very highly debated and discussed. So, when you take the, uh, as per this license, if you take the open source software and combine it with your, with your proprietary software, even if one line of your software is integrated into the open source software, then your software becomes a derivative work of the open source software and therefore it gets governed by GPL and the source code of your proprietary software must be made available and the combined software that is your own software and GPL software combined should also be distributed under GPL only. Some, some proponents or some, some portions of the open source community and corporates argue that if the proprietary software is dynamically linked with the open source software and the proprietary software and the open source software as main, are maintained as two different softwares, then the combination of these two softwares does not become a derivative work. That is, the proprietary software uh, integra being integrated into the open source software does not create a derivative work and therefore the whole software will not be governed by GPL. However, no court has made a decision on what amounts to be a derivative work under GPL and therefore as it stands today it is very hazy but most corporates follow the principle of maintaining their proprietary software independent from open source software whenever they use an open source software governed by GPL. Now moving on the next license is Mozilla public license this is a restrictive license all the terms and conditions of this license are similar to GPL except for what amounts to be a derivative work and what rights you have with respect to creation of a whole work using a proprietary software and an open source software governed by MPL. So just like GPL it grants the right to copy, modify and distribute. Distribution of verbatim copies can be done only along with source code. The license travels along with the software and notices must be kept intact. Then distribution of modified copies, uh, modified source code has to be made available. The same license will continue to govern. New notice with respect to modification has to be placed and original notices must be kept intact. However, when it comes to combining a proprietary software with respect to an MPL software, you can uh, transfer uh, this whole software, a whole work that is created based on combination of these two softwares under two different licenses. The proprietary license can be transferred under the prop uh, proprietary software can be transferred under the proprietary license. Source code of this software need not be made, made available. On the other hand, the Mozilla MPL software can be transferred under MPL along with its source code. So this software gives that flexibility uh, and makes it much more clearer with respect to combining or transferring a proprietary software along with a open source software which is not there with respect to GPL and that is why this license is considered to be a restrictive license which gives more flexibility as opposed to uh, GPL. Now this software, all, uh, this license also uh, comes without any warranty or liability uh, with respect to or uh, this license also provides that the author of the software or the copyright owner does not give any warranty or liability with respect to any damage or issue caused because of the usage of a software governed by this license. Now coming to the uh, last license which is the BSD license. This is the most flexible licenses and the license that is sought after by most corporates. This license provides the right to copy, modify, distribute, redistribute and so on and so forth uh, with just two basic distribution conditions. Condition: The first condition is that the notices with respect to authorship and copyright ownership must be maintained intact or must be provided and the second condition is that the disclaimer of warranty and indemnity should continue along with the software or should be maintained uh, in the software, should be provided in the software during distribution. As long as these two conditions are satisfied, the software can be modified and distributed in any manner. The, soft, the original version of a BSD software can be distributed under a proprietary license if you follow these two, these two conditions. So taking the example of MyTV, if you 
if if my tv is governed by a bsd license then my tv can be taken and distributed under a different license source code need not be made available my tv software can be bundled or integrated with a proprietary software and the whole software can be distributed under a proprietary license as long as the two basic notice and uh, disclaimer of warranty and indemnity conditions are maintained this software also very clearly provides that the author does not the author or copyright owner does not give any warranty or take any liability as you can see uh, bsd license is the most flexible license and and that's why it's very sought after by corporates now in order to assess which open source software to use one of the most important uh, elements that is taken into consideration by corporates is the license and in the license you look at the rights the conditions that are imposed by the license and also the flexibilities in order to ascertain if those flexibilities fall within the scope of your business goals uh, to once again reiterate the differences between the three kinds of licenses with the help of the example that we began with uh, if you if my tv is governed by gpl then the flexibilities with respect to using my tv would be very less as opposed to if my tv is governed by a bsd license if my tv is governed by gpl then it will become a viral software where any software that is combined with my tv will will also be governed by gpl source code has to be transferred when you are distributing the software in a combined form on the other hand if my tv is governed by a bsd license my tv can be transferred under any license of choice and source code need not be made available during distribution individually or by combining with other softwares with this we come to the end of this lecture before i conclude uh, i'd like to introduce you to our uh, once again to our blog uh, sinusblog.com which has lots of information uh, for your benefit on open source software we also have a open source software free course which you can register and uh, pursue for free on onlineipcourses.com you can also access our other resources uh, such as radio synapse which provides you weekly radio news on intellectual property uh, and also our ip newsletter convergence.in ipconvergence.in thank you very much i will look forward to your feedback questions or comments you can write to me on contact at iparacademy.com i hope you enjoyed this presentation and i look forward to meeting you in future presentations have a wonderful time until then